Islam, Moors. Islam. I begin in the name of Allah, Allah. most gracious, most merciful. Sure. All praises are due to Allah, Allah, the Lord of the worlds, master of the day of judgment. It is he alone we worship. It is he who we beseech for aid. That's right. I give honor to the holy and divine prophet, Prophet Nobu Ali, the founder of the more sensible America, right. the savior of humanity. I give honor to the forerunner of the prophet, Brother Marcus Mosiah Garland. Right. I give honor to the past leadership of the more sensible America. That's right. I give honors to our present Grand Sheik, Brother R. Jones Bay, right. and to the Assistant Grand Sheik, Brother P. Chase Ill. That's right. I give honors to everything the Chairman gave honors to at the onset of this great meeting. That's right. I ask you honors to all whom honors do. I ask you honors to each and every one of you. Islam, boys! Islam! As it is a custom, when addressing a group of Moors, I'm going to read from our holy literature which is entitled, The Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Circle seven, divinely prepared by the noble prophet Ali by the guiding of his father God Allah, the great God of the universe, to redeem man from his sinful and fallen stage of humanity back to the highest plane of life with his father. God Allah. 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 I'm going to call your attention, dear brothers and sisters, to page number 58. This is from chapter number 47, which is entitled Egypt, the capital empire of the dominion of Africa. And now read instructions 9 to 11, which is found on page number 58. The prophet's divine instruction states, according to all true and divine records of the human race, there is no Negro, black, or colored race attached to the human family. That's right. Because all the inhabitants of Africa were and are of the human race, descendants of the ancient Canaanite nation from the holy land of Canaan. What your ancient forefathers were, you are today without doubt or contradiction. There is no one who is able to change man from the descendant nature of his forefathers unless his power extends beyond the great universal creator, Allah himself. Islam, Islam. 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 I'd like to welcome everyone now to another Sunday school meeting. Prophet Nubu Ali informs us in Act 5 of the additional laws right. that out from our Sunday school comes the guidance of the nation. Islam, Islam. Islam. And, uh, Praise Allah. I thank Almighty God Allah always for the way the chairman opens up. <laughs> because what he read is not strange. It's right in harmony with the lesson that I'm going to talk about this afternoon. Islam Moses. Islam. Uh, today, today's lesson is in direct proportion and in harmony with what we have been discussing the past year according to science. Mm -hmm. Last Sunday school we talked about man. Spirit man. For the prophet's divine instructions lets us know man is not the body nor the soul, but he is a spirit and a part of Almighty God Allah. Islam. 
And in Wednesday orientation class, the aide to the orientation class instructor went over the chapter, the pinnacle of wisdom. It's not more. It's it's not. Not. The pinnacle, the apex of wisdom in the chapters dealing with our lives. It's not more. It's not. Now today, we're going to talk about our nationality. All right. All right. Very important. And it is consistent with the teaching of who we are as being spirit man. Mm -hmm. And the things that I'm going to reveal to you this afternoon, mm -hmm. praise be to Almighty God alone. It's going to reveal a lot about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Nationality, knowledge of self, that is your foundation. If you don't know who you are, you lack knowledge of self, you lack the foundation in which to build upon mm -hmm. to make yourself a productive member of society. It's Islam. That's, right. yeah. oh. That's your foundation. If you can't answer the question, what is your nationality intelligently, something is wrong. We're not Negroes. We're not black people. That's right. We're not colored. That's right. And we're definitely not African American. All right. All right. We can prove that. That's right. That's simple geography. That's right. But a lot of us skip those classes. Africa is not a country. It's a continent composed of many nations, over 50 sovereign nations, as well as tribes. Nobody who comes from Africa comes to this country, whether from Nigeria, Kenya, Mozambique, will claim to be African American. That's right. That's right. But. <laughs> There are some African Americans here. <laughs> South African Americans. All right now. And guess what? A lot of them are European. That's right. So you got to be clear. <laughs> what is your nationality? Right. Now, we got to define nation. We always got to define nationality. <clears throat> we got to we we using the tools that we use in the workshop of the mind when things are made of thought where we build up character. Right. So we got to go over this over and over and over again. What's the definition of nationality, brothers and sisters? The quality. The quality, quality and character. character. The quality of character. Which arises. Which arises out of the fact that a person, of a person belongs, to a, belongs, to, a belongs to a nation. Or a state. state. All right. So that fact is letting us know that nationality is something that is intangible. Mm -hmm. It is a quality <laughs> or a character. Mm -hmm. So to acquire nationality is to acquire the quality or character of that nation. It's not more. It's <coughs> Today I'm just going to give you a, a little bit more in regards to nationality. just to put the concept into perspective. All right. I want us to comprehend this concept. This is a divine concept, nationality. Nationality is the Morris pulling out their notebooks now. See, everybody memorized the definition of nationality. And they're putting a little something a little bit different on the board. I hear you most pulling out your books, and that's good. Okay. 
Nationality is a cultural, political complexion of the collective. Mm -hmm. That's right. I want you to see the concept. And the prophet is going to reveal insight into this meaning. Because we're going to have to qualify this, this definition. Can you more see that? Um. Nationality is a cultural, political complexion of the collective. That's right. Yeah. A collective bound together by common ancestry. That's right. Habitation, culture, and mutual agreement to unwaveringly adhere to common customs, rules, laws, traditions. ETC. Islam yeah, Islam. Islam. Now we have to qualify this. <clears throat> Nationality is a cultural political complexion of the collective. This is character. Okay. This is character. Or even the personality of the nation, if you will. And this is why we have to come to the more sensitive of America right. to learn what is expected of you to be a member of this Moorish nation. A collective bound together by common ancestry. What does that mean? And listen, I'm not trying to trick you or fool you. You can stay right in the Prophet Nofu Ali's lessons in the questionnaire. What is your nationality? Why are we more Shemarian? Because we're the descendants of Barack and Jim All right, right there. That gives you insight to qualifying the meaning or the explanation of the this concept of nationality. Nationality is the cultural political complexion of the collective, the complexion of all Moors. A collective. Bound together by common ancestry. What did you say, brother? Descend. Descendant. Descendants of what? Of, of who? Of Moroccans. Of Moroccans. Yeah. Common ancestry. Right. We're all descendants of Moroccans. That's right. Moroccan is the modern term for what? Moabites. Moabites. The Moabites were the founders of the holy city of Mecca. All right? We founded the holy city of Mecca. That's right. Yeah. The ancient name for Mecca is what? Garden of Eden. The place where the, where, the, where the physical part of man was first born. That was founded by your ancestors. 
So we're bent, bound together by common ancestors. We, we all have a common ancestor. Habitation. What does that mean? Right. Back to back to the prophet. Why are we why are we Moorish Americans? Because we have the same civil rights as they're born in America. Born in America. We got two flags, Moors. That's right. A flag of our descent, the Moorish flag, a flag that's over 50,000 years old, right, and the flag of our birth. That's right. America. That's right. So we're bound together by common ancestry, right. habitation. We're born in America. That's mm -hmm. right. How about culture? Mm -hmm. What do we mean by culture? It's not my sister. Well, it's our wives get paid to our lie and only to so divine prophet, prophet, you know what I mean? Um, the way in which uh, a certain nation do a thing, how they right. live in a certain society. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Anyone else? That's very good. Culture. These are our collective experiences. Come on, brother. I see you. Islam. 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 First, I rise and give praises to Allah and high honors to the Prophet Nubu Ali, to the forerunner of Mark's Mosaic Garvey as John was in Jesus about 2,000 years ago. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Allah. I give honors to the leadership here at the Moore Science Temple of America. Islam. To my brothers and sisters in Islam. I give honors where honors are due. I give honors to each and every one of you. Islam. Islam. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. What was that question again? Culture, Where's brother. Culture. We want to qualify this term well, so we can bring home this con this divine concept of nationality. Well, I'm, because I'm, culture is directly related to nationality. The on, culture brother. to honor the creed and principles of our forefathers. Where, where is culture? Culturally. What is culture? The sisters, she it, gave us some it, good it, information. It, Something that is passed down by our forefathers. Absolutely. It is. It is, brother. It is. It what is, is culture? Islam. Islam. I rise to give all praise to Allah. I honor to the noble prophet, Jurali. I give honors to each and every one of you. Learn patterns of behavior. Learn patterns of behavior. Yes. Specifically, we're talking about the, the arts, the values. Islam. Islam, go ahead. Islam. Islam. Arise, give all praises to Allah, honor to his prophet, noble Jurali. Give honor to everything the chairman, give honor to the onset of the meeting. Give honor to my father and my mother. Give honor to each and every one of you. Islam. Islam. It's, it's a way of life. It's a way of life, yes. It's a way of life. And we're talking about all aspects of life. The arts, the values, the customs, the, the traditions, yeah. language, yeah. which characterizes a nation. So you get your culture from your nationality. And our people, because we lack knowledge of self, we lack nationality, we try to invent culture. Mm. A pseudo-culture or a subculture, if you will. Uh, the hip-hop music, they say hip-hop culture. <laughs> All right? Listen, when you know your nationality, you don't have to e e invent or create a pseudo-culture. Your culture is the direct result of you knowing your nationality. We're talking about a, a unique and distinct collective experience that brings about a certain behavior. Mm. It's not most. It's That's not. culture. All right? So nationality is the cultural, political complexion of the collective. A collective bound together by common ancestry, habitation, culture, and mutual agreement. To unwaveringly adhere to common customs, rules, laws, traditions, ETC. You know your nationality, you're part of a nation, you don't demonstrate rogue behavior. No. It's not about doing what you want to do when you are part of a nation of people. Right. You know what this is? Another term for this is free national standards. That's right. And again, you got to come to the more Scientific of America to learn these things. That's right. You can't be out there just doing what you want to do. Well, I know I'm a more. I read a few books. Sometimes I come out to holiday celebrations. I got a fez and a turban. You know, sometimes I, I blow the dust off it and I put it on my head. That's not nationality, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. All right? So 
This is nationality. You gave me the definition earlier, legally speaking, right. of nationality. What is our nationality? More Samaritan. All right. More Samaritan. Why are we more Samaritans? We are the of our and more Samaritan. Today, I want to focus on this Moorish part. Mm. Okay. I want to I focus on that. Because I'm going to, I'm going to give you, and this is to clear up some confusion that's out there about Moors. And what does Moor mean? Because there, there are certain people who say, well, y'all say y'all Moors. Moors come from the European. That comes from Latin. That comes from Greek. We're going to destroy that myth today. I'm going to, give, I'm going to break down the word Moor today. According to one of the oldest written languages on earth, okay, more. the Medu Netter. But before we go there, uh, we got to clear up this suffix, this ISH situation. Mm -hmm. Because there are some people who criticize yeah. Moorish Americans in the temple say, y'all, y'all Moorish, but I, I'm a Moor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they try to draw a distinction, and this is, this is really sad. All right, so we're going to clear up this suffix ish. What does ish mean? Like. 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 Miss. Like. Uh, Say again. Like. Like. It means like. What mm -hmm. did you What did you say back there? Uh. Um. Okay. The word Moorish. First of all, just going back to some of the ancient languages. Ish is the ancient Hebrew word meaning man. And when we say man, we're not talking about males. Because when we say man, we're talking about man, man and woman. Right. We all spirit man. man. Okay. Woman is simply a divine variation of man. She's womb man. Sort of like uh, the cherubim and seraphim. If you study chapter number 11, there are seven planes mentioned. There is no plane of, of seraphim, it's cherubim. The seraphim is simply a variation of cherubim. It's not uh -huh. And they're not angels. So that's remove right. that concept from that's your mind. Right. They're not angels. That's, that's uh, Christianity. Okay? I-S-H means uh, belonging to or being. <laughs> Belonging to or being. Mm -hmm. And when you when you look up this suffix I I S H, it is chiefly used indicating. What? Nation. Nationality. Okay. <laughs> so we don't we don't gotta get spooked out with the suffix ish because it's chiefly used indicating nationality mm -hmm. of or belonging to or being. Mm -hmm. The prophet Noble Drali talks about a law about being a more shmer. Consciously existing as a more American Islam. 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 Yeah. Rising all praise to Allah, Hanatosh Prophet, Noble Drawley. But just note when you're looking up ish, mm -hmm. there are multiple, multiple definitions. Right. So you have to find the definitions that fits the context right. and what's being discussed. Nationality. Islam Moors. <laughs> context. A absolutely. All right, so we're, we're more Americans. Could you please erase this, brother? Yes. Because it's, it's a lot. It's a lot we have to get to in regards to identifying and understanding our nationality, who we are. Uh, who here knows the meaning of their name? I do. Which name? Oh. Your first name. <laughs> oh, Sister S. Lewis Hill. What's your name, sister? And what's, what's, your, what's your name? And this is one instance. 
Hmm. Where I'm going to make it permissible to say your first name. <laughs> because in the more science of America, our custom is to use your last name, right. your surname. And the et etymology of sir means super, your super name. Okay. <laughs> All right? So, uh, what's your first name, sister? Islam. Islam. Give all praises to Allah. Honor to his holy prophet, Prophet Noah Ali. Honors to each and every one of you. Honors for honors to student, honors to Sunday school. My first name is Sadia. Sadia. It's Arabic. It's Arabic. And it means good fortune or fortunate. Good fortune or fortunate. Wow. Sadia. Islam, yeah. sister. You um, said you know you know the meaning of your name. Yes. What's your name? First and foremost, I give praise to uh, Allah and to a uh, uh, high honor to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and everything that the Chairman gave honor to and each and every one of you. My name, first name is Leona, uh -huh. and it means Lady of Courage. Wow, oh, that's beautiful, mm -hmm. Leona, that Lady of Courage. Islam, brother. Islam, Islam. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. Give honor to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Give honor to all who want to do. My first name is Dennis. It's Dennis. Like, the way my mama was explaining it to me, it was recorded as Menace. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't understand. I don't think your name means Menace. <laughs> That's what she gave to me. Right. <laughs> Dennis the Menace. <laughs> I don't think his name means Menace. You got to look up that etymology of that word, brother. Nothing more about that. Exactly. Islam, my sister. Um, my name is Linda. Linda. And in Spanish, it means beautiful. Woo, Linda. That's beautiful. Anyone else? Islam, brother. Islam, more. Islam, Islam. Islam. already risen, but Arthur means noble. Wow, peace. 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 That's powerful. That's powerful. You see, you got to get this, these, these foreign concepts out of your mind that you got to change your name. Right. Oh, you're a Muslim, you Muslim, what's your attribute? <laughs> Arabic name doesn't mean holy name. That's right. No language, you can't, you can't raise up one language above another. Right. Language is a means of communication. Right. And Allah fitted us with language to what? Improve yeah. our society. Mm -hmm. You think your mother made a mistake? That's, that's, that's disrespect. Mm -hmm. To attempt to change the name that your mother gave you at birth. Right. You gotta honor that name. You may, you may, you know, there are some people who demonstrate a degree of rites of passage. Now some rites of passages, they may be given a name because of their rites of passage, but still you honor the name that your mother gave you. Right. All right? right? Because the name given to you at birth carries a particular vibration. It's mm -hmm. Moors. You gotta honor that. Like this, this, this brother name is Arthur. That's right. That means noble. That's right. Imagine if he got rid of that. He didn't got rid of that honor yeah. of being named noble. That's powerful, brother. That's very interesting. It's like, sister, I seen your hand. It's like, what's your name? What does it mean? Islam. 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 Um, first, I rise and give praises to Allah and honor to Prophet Noble Drew Ali and honor to the poor one, the Prophet Marcus Mosaic Oregon, honor to where honors do, and honor to each and every one of you, Islam. Islam. Um, my, a lot of people don't know. Go ahead. Well, some individuals in the temple may not know. Go ahead. But I take, I don't, I'm not taking offense to what you said. Praise Allah. Okay. Come um, I was born with the name of Rose Annette Mims, mm. okay? And what I wow. did, I don't consider that I was disrespectful to Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go okay, ahead. I wanted to honor my forefathers yeah. because of the fact that they were disrespected and their language and their culture was mm -hmm. taken away from them. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give something back. All right. But my mother, she was in tune with Ooh. herself, her higher self, by naming me Rose. Come on, sis. Rose it simply means a beautiful flower. Wow. Okay? And that's what I am, a beautiful Amen. flower. Amen. Okay. Uh -huh. Amina means mm. trustworthy. Trustworthy. And that's one of the qualities that Allah possesses, which I believe I have within myself. Yes. And, um, Amen. and before I did change my name, 
I thought I was correcting my name. Right. Okay. Right. Right. But you know, certain individuals told me he said the name is a beautiful name. Yeah. But I felt deep within my heart. Yeah. That that's something I wanted to do for as far as honoring my forefathers. That's right. That's okay. right. That's right. So I don't feel as though I would disrespect them. No. My, no. It was just that I did not have the full understanding it's long. It's long. until I came into the more science temple of America, it's long. who helped me truly understand that's right. about the annexation. That's right, with Queen. The name. That's right. So Queen. I already was. I was already in tune with the with mm -hmm. the father mm -hmm. or I was in tune with my mother as well good, because good. one thing I don't do is disrespect my mother that's right because we all come from a mother that's you right know what I mean? and our go. father there I don't go. know who my, my biological father is mm -hmm. but I do know that I still love him that's right no matter if I don't go. know anything about him praise Allah very good right. and you still honor Rose right and you I understand still. your mother was in tune right and I mean I mean not mm -hmm. I mean I mean Amun. So be it. This is one of the qualities of Almighty God Allah, according to the ancient languages in ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet. Very good. Very good. Brother Mahdi Beth. Yeah, Islam. 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 Rise and give you praise Allah, Father of the Universe, and the Prophet Noah Drali. Founded the Moorish Science Temple of America, honors to Marcus Garvey. Yes. Forerunner to the Prophet, honors to the past and present leadership of the Moorish Science Temple of America. I give honors to each and every one of you. Honors for honors to do. Praise Allah for praise everything. Allah. That's right. And praise Allah because I, I said sisters right on point yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. came into a certain understanding of things. But Islam. I will say this. Some everybody don't know. Islam. My mother and my father, they named me wow. Reginald. Wow. Which means king. Wow. And angel. And wow. angel. So <laughs> at that time my understanding, that's what I want. I just wanted to keep that name, Same that thing. you know, that spirit and everything. Same thing. And so I became Malik. That's right, same thing. And praise Allah because uh, <laughs> one thing about that is, see, I, I always, always, see, I, I know a lot of people. Yes. And I always run into these people from my past. Mm. And as I say, I always say they're part of me. They yes. know me by Reginald. It's long. And it keeps me, you know, informed yes. of who I am. That's right. And keeps me humble. That's and, right. You know, my, I know my parents didn't make a mistake. It's loud. But right. at that same time, you know, they, you know, hey, they gave me that. Yes. And I will answer to that. It's loud. But if you if you're new. Yes. And I give you my present name, mm -hmm. I will hope that you will recognize. It's not praise a lot. It's loud. So you know, honor, you know, honor. Yes. That's and all. we're saying that's the same we thing, brother. Yes. Same thing. We're saying the same thing. Yes. It's loud. Rise, give all praise to Allah and honor to his prophet, Noble Durali. Uh, my name, Ronald, mm. means mighty counselor wow. slash ruler. Wow! <laughs> That's powerful! <laughs> the point that I'm making is that yeah. your name has a meaning. It has a divine interpretation. Once you know the meaning of that name, you, you try your best to live up, up to its attributes right. or its characteristics. Right. Noble. Islam. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I got to continue. Okay? Because I'm, I'm making a point okay. about knowing the meaning of your name. Okay. Because now that you know the meaning of your name, you, you know what type of spirit That's right. that you have to move into, if you will. Islam. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, knowing that you are more American, all right, more rich, the root word is more we got to know what this word means. <laughs> what does it mean to be more? Now, the term more, it implies That's right. original man. That's right. You see? Once you know what original man is, who original man was, if you will, because you, you're original man. All right? Everyone doesn't know that original man, the original people, were lords. Everyone is not aware of the birthright of man. Like I said, holy day. When Almighty God Allah created man, after he did that, he did something else to qualify the spirit man that he created. What did Allah do after he created man? He breathed, he breathed in his spirit. The, the breath of life. The breath of life. After that, then what? He gave him dominion. It's not a monster. We're familiar. He gave him dominion on everything in the sea and everything on earth. Mm -hmm. 
That's your birthright to be the Lord of all the plane of manifest and the plane of soul. See, everyone is not aware of that, brother. That's why we're going a little bit deeper in regards to explaining the meaning of more. More applies to original man, but original man had a particular character in a way about himself. It's not more. It's not. It's not. So today, we're going to define the term more in one of the oldest, and I say one of the, because we have yet to still discover many of the aspects of the culture of the ancient Moabites. All the lands have not been traversed. All the sands have not been uncovered. So I qualify one of the oldest languages, written languages that we have today. One of them is called May, in a, by mainstream society, <laughs> hieroglyphics. Okay. That's that's Greek. Okay. All right. For sacred symbols or divine symbols, divine glyphs, divine carvings. Okay. Because you have this prefix hiero. Do not we read in our Quran about the hierophant? He's the chief in the school of mysteries. And one of his principal jobs is to bring you into the presence of the divine. In the presence of that which is holy. In the presence of that which is sacred. All right, so sacred carvings divine carvings or divine symbols. And that the ancient language of, of the Moors we refer to it as Meduneta. Uh, Meduneta divine divine words in it's divine spoken word, <coughs> or words of the gods. Words of the gods. According to the teachings of Moorish science, okay. the creatures of Allah are what? Deities right. made flesh. Everyone who doesn't understand ancient Egyptian, uh, ancient Egyptian culture, ancient Egyptian society, those who are uninitiated are confused. They said, well, the ancient Egyptians, they, they worship many gods. No, they did. They appreciate the divine aspects of the creator, which is present in all of his creatures. Yes. Islam, Islam. 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 Allah, you, you can find Almighty God Allah present in all of his creation. And you recognize those abilities, those, those, those divine given abilities, but Almighty God Allah. We talked about an orientation class in the chapter Pinnacle of Wisdom about the bird. The lark in particular. Allah blessed the lark with the divine ability to sing. In the morning, the, the lark sings. So our ancient ancestors, they, they appreciated these divine gifts that are bestowed in Allah's creation. We honored it. And I say the uninitiated are confused because the initiated, they were fully aware of the oneness of Almighty God Allah. Mm -hmm. All right? And like the sister's name, this is one of the attributes of Allah. Right. And this is why you hear me, Holy Day, I say amen. Because we think amen belongs to the church. Mm -hmm. nah. So I'm, I'm attempting to take it back. Yeah, that's right. That's Muslim. That's right. Amen. Amin. Amun. That was one of the names of the pharaohs. Amun. Amin Ra. Amin Hotep. All right. So it, re it, it refers to the hidden creative abilities of Almighty God Allah. You see, in the book Metal Nature, they stop at the hidden. Latent powers. That's right. That we have within us. 
Because all of the attributes that Allah has, the potencies that Allah has, we have it within us. It's simply un underdeveloped. The Prophet Jesus fully developed them. That's right. That's why he is the pattern. You see, we can agree with our Christian brothers and sisters when they say Jesus is God. He is God. But he's not the great God of the universe. Jesus had a father. Yes. He had a creator. That's right. Allah made Jesus. All right? So Jesus didn't pray to himself. <laughs> so my father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. All right? So, one second. Okay. This is the sacred utterance, the divine utterance, the words of the gods, because the symbols... They are Almighty God Allah's creation. And they are symbols used to build Almighty God Allah's divine creation. We're gonna, we're gonna go into that. So uh, this is one of the oldest written languages on earth. Uh, I see connections. There are some who don't, but I see connections to many of the <laughs> other ancient written languages, like the language of the Sumerians who wrote in cuneiform, right? Wedge-shaped writing. The writing of our ancestors in, in Mesoamerica. The Olmec, the Mayan. Mm -hmm. It's called a pictographic system, writing system, all right? But it's coded, all right? It's coded because within the symbols, within the symbols are ideas that are being communicated. We, we wanna, Demonstrated, all right, within the word more and how the word more is spelled according to the Medunetter mm -hmm. Islam system. Uh, I already reason. What does Medunetter mean? Words of the gods. Oh, okay. Netter, Netteru. Mm -hmm. Islam. See, Jesus. A lot of Christians, I'm not speaking radical. No, no, we are when not. They, when they say, when they say Jesus is God, they think he's the great God. No, no, uh-uh. That he's the dead, that, that, you know, he's God, God begotten son. Right. But Jesus is God man. It's not. Absolutely. You all had the ability to develop into God Correct. Man, and women. That's right. What I, Jesus said, what I have done, all men shall do. Yeah. What I am, all men shall, shall be. be. Jesus was born son of man, but he unfolded into the son of Allah. And when we say son of Allah, we're not referring to begotten. Because Allah never begets, nor is he begotten. Prophet Jesus had a mother and a father. Right. Yes. Joseph and, and Mary. Mary. That's right. And when those who were around Jesus and they addressed the prophet Jesus, they referred to him, Jesus, Rabbi, yes. son of David. That's right. The bloodline is traced by way of Joseph. That's right. All right. So we gotta be we gotta be clear with these divine concepts. Okay. Um, and the the metal netter system, or the system of hieroglyphics, just just quickly. All right. Uh, you have three primary ways of appreciating the language. You have what is known as uh, ideograms, phonogram. And deter determinative. <clears throat> Ideograms, phonograms, and determinatives. And understanding this is, is very important. Because you have a you have a lot of people today uh, who are part of the so-called conscious community, and they go they go to the Metunetter and they may pick up a book by uh, Ernest A. Wallace Budge. We got Budge's books. We got uh, Champollion. We have Gardner's List. And they, they get the book and they look at it and, you know, they assume meanings, but without proper training. Right. All right? You can misread. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, ideo, the ideograms, this is basically... Um, the meaning, the actual meaning of the letters or the glyphs, if you will. Mm. All right, the actual meaning. The phonograms is the, the sounds that the glyph makes. Oh, no. Right? You have many glyphs and 
One may be a B or a C or an L. That's the, the final gram. And then you have the determinative. <laughs> this is what most leave out. You see, uh, in the Medunetta, and um, I, can, I can write it like this. <laughs> okay, NTR, Netter, because according to the ancient languages, there are no vowels, <laughs> right? So you may have two words spelled the same with different meanings. How do you know the meaning? The determinative. The determinative is the, the, the letter or the glyph with no sound, but gives you insight in regards to what word in the context in which the word is being used. For example, more. You look up the term more, you're going to see a lot of things. You're going to see Berber. You're going to see a, a Muslim of North Africa. You're going to see an inhabitant of Mauritania. You're also going to see a parcel of land. You're going to see to, to tie or fasten a boat. <laughs> to moor a boat. Mooring. <laughs> so, context is key. Etymology is key. And this is why I'm going to show you various meanings of the word more according to the Medu Netter. It's going to reveal a lot. And it's beautiful. It's very beautiful. All right. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate the determinative. We're going to, I'm going to show you that. Islam, brother. Islam, Mike. could you go over that ideogram? The again? ideogram, the, the final gram, the ideogram is the, basically the meaning, the meaning of the actual okay. glyph. Okay, meaning of the glyph. the meaning of it. Because with the glyphs, with the letters, you can put them together, and together it's a word, but also individually it's a word. Right. <laughs> Interesting, right? Yeah. All right. Before I continue, I just want to bring out the fact that the hieroglyphics were manifested in three primary ways. You have the hieroglyphic, the metal netto, the symbols itself. You also have a man of writing, which is called heratic. And you, you get the high row again. And you have what is known as demotic. demotic. Not demonic. <laughs> demotic. demotic. These are Greek words. Demo, demo from democracy. And it reveals to, in regards to how, basically how this script is used. Heratic. This is like cursive writing for the actual hieroglyph. That's what that is. Hmm. Hieratic, hiero, this was the script that was used predominantly by the priest. Hieratic. That's right. That's why it's called hieratic. Hiero, the priest. Demotic, democracy, the common people, the people, this was used in everyday usage. Okay? And again, hieratic and demotic. Coptic came much later. Coptic, way later. We're talking about common era. All of this is before common era. Okay? And um, her heratic was like a cursive. Demonic was even a more intense cursive writing of the Merunetta. And it's so, it's so distinct that when you look at it, when you read it, it it's, to me... I see a correlation between it and Aramaic. Now we're traveling. Now we're going places. Aramaic was the language of who? Jesus. Jesus. I ask that question to so many different audiences, and everybody say Hebrew. Everybody say Hebrew. 
Aramaic. That's right. And Arabic is more closely to Aramaic than Hebrew. Very interesting. Hmm. And there are different dialects of Aramaic. Mm -hmm. Syriac, for example. Mm -hmm. Spoken in ancient Mesopotamia. That's right. Okay. You have Western Syriac and Eastern Syriac. And I learned this very recently when we were going over a lesson in Sister A. Seward Hill. She says, Brother Grand Sheik, we were talking about the address of Prophet Jesus. Jesus lived the Marmion way according to our Quran. She says, what does Marmion mean? Mm. I said, sister, I have to look that up. And it took me mm. to this, which was awesome. M-A-R. This is the root of Marmion. M-A-R is Eastern Syriac. M-O-R is Western Syriac. Mm. See? Because the vowels are interchangeable. And even in the Metroneta, the vowels are interchangeable, and I'm going to show you that. In, in Western Syriac, you know what more means? No. Mm. My Lord. Mm. Come on now, brothers and sisters. Western Syria. My Lord. What does that remind you of? Mm -hmm. Chapter 1. The creation of fallen man. Man is made Lord. Of all the planet manifest and a planet of soul. So again, like we said, you know your name. You know the meaning of your name. You see what you got to live up to. Original man. So what should I be trying to do? Not tell people what to do. <laughs> Judge people. That means govern yourself. That's right. Self. Get your thoughts under control, Lord. It's your birthright. You want to get it back? You gotta study yourself. Alright, so um Aramaic, we find this word more. Uh, more means same thing. This is just another dialect. Just this is dialect. Eastern Syriac. This is Western Syriac. Okay. Same word. Same word, my lord. Okay? The vowels are interchangeable. Oh, okay. Same word. Same thing. Yes, absolutely. Islam just you say um, if you want to get it back. Mm -hmm. Come on, sister. Uh, get back my get back the uh, title of Lord. Come on. Could you tell us like where? Because I mean I have an understanding as far as astrologically, uh -huh. as far as getting back to to lordship. Uh -huh. But could you say what um, the prophet actually said? Because I don't want to. Um, one statement. Huh? One statement. One statement. Learn to love instead of hate. Right. That's it. We don't gotta complicate. Learn to love instead of hate. Okay, so like say if you you feel as though that you have learned or you are you still no, learning. Then we have it. But if you still learn, if you if you have learned, you wouldn't be here on this earth, right? Come on. Right. Uh, so <laughs> we'll be vibrating at a very high free a higher frequency than we are right now. It's a system we're talking about here. That's why we always go over love cannot be manifest until this way has been prepared. Who prepares way for love, Mors? Purity. Purity. You gotta purify your hearts and your mind for true love to come on more. We're not talking about nothing carnal, nothing physical. Oh, uh, I'm not in love with him no more, but I still love him. That's nothing but an illusion. And then if you're still dealing with an illusion, you still got more lessons to learn about yourself. Right. Love don't change. Right. It don't, it's, it's constant. And it don't pass away. It's divine. Right. And we talked about aspects of love last week in regards to loving everybody the same. Right. Having the same love that you have for your mother for the stranger at your gates. Right. Now, who doing that? Right. Take a lot of practice. You know what I'm saying? Right. Take a lot of practice, brother. That's right. Learning how to Love. develop those senses. Mm. Remember, the senses are ministers. That's right. Your sentinel, your eyes are sentinels that watch for thee. But yet, how often are they unable to distinguish truth from error? We're confused about what these eyes see. And these eyes don't see. Mm. You see with your brain. Mm. Remember what they used to say? You see with your eyes, not with your hands. You see, you see with your brain and not your eyes. The eyes, they are a lens that con con converts light into electrical signals. The image is created in the rear of the brain. 
So what does that tell you? What you see is nothing but an illusion. It's not real. Right. Prophet right all the time. He right. <laughs> so, oh, wait a minute. Can I say something? Go ahead. That's why some people with, with mental illness, they uh, hallucinate. They see things that's not there. This. So their brain is not. Islam. There's, there's a condition, I believe it's called syn synesthesia. Is it right? Yeah. I wait, thank you. I wish one of the nurses were here today. They see colors. They see colors. See sounds. See sounds. Isn't that that's deep. Mm -hmm. But how can you see how can you see sounds? Uh, yeah, how can you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you hear, I, I thought it goes in your ear. Your sounds is yeah. what you hear in your ear. It's illusionary system. Mm -hmm. The true sensation are on the yeah. soul plane. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um the metal netter. Hieroglyphics. Ancient, ancient, ancient. That's right. The Egyptians were who according to Al Quran? Hamatites. Hamatites. Hamatites and of a direct descendant of Mizraim. Okay. Ham came from where? Canaan land. Canaan land. Alright? He came from Canaan land. Who was the first into Africa? His son Cush and his family. And who came second? His father hand. Alright? So we're tracing things back. That's right. Because they say, well, we can't find no origin to the metal netter. Mm. We demonstrated that in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> this is about Allah's creation. Yeah. Okay? Those mystery schools in ancient Egypt, mm -hmm. we were demonstrating that in the Garden of Eden, in Canaan land. We just further developed the science and created schools. Those mystery schools were temples. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> All right. So, according to one of the oldest written languages in the world, you find the name, the word more being used. That's right. Not from the European. That's right. <laughs> You yourselves mm -hmm. were using this word to identify the land mm -hmm. and also to identify yourselves. Mm -hmm. Egypt. Egypt had many names. One of the names of Egypt was Mizraim. It was called Mizraim at one time. Mm -hmm. Okay? It was called Kemet. Mm -hmm. We know this. Mm -hmm. Everybody, ancient Kemet, Kemet, Kemet. Mm -hmm. But it had another name right. as well. <laughs> One of the ancient names of Egypt. Tameri. Oh, Tameri. Oh, Ancient name. Huh? You said ancient name. For Egypt. Egypt. Tameri. Yes. I want you to see this. I want you to keep in mind, <laughs> we went over these uh, ideogram, final gram, determinatives. <clears throat> we got to be clear about this and the fact that in the ancient language, vowels were not used. So many of those who were attempting to decode the metuneta would plug in whatever they felt was necessary to plug in. Vows are interchangeable. I have I have this book. It's called A Book of the Beginnings hmm. by Gerald Massey. Hmm. You boys all right with me reading a little bit from this book? Just to yeah, put in perspective yeah. what we're talking about right here. Y'all all right with that? Yeah, it's <laughs> not. All right, because I, I don't usually do that. All right, in this book, it says, the name of Tamari is the land of Meru. Whence Meru and the ancient Moro was once the capital of the two Egypts. I want you to see it.
So what is this saying? All of this is the same. Meru, Meru, Moro. And we went over Moro when we were demonstrating a mixin. The etymology of a mixin. It goes on to state Moro in Ethiopia was due north from the equator, but reckoning from Central Africa and or from Abyssinia, we shall find the land of the ancient Mori. Uh oh. Mori. Ancient Mori. And in parentheses, he has this. Can you see this? Mauritania. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thus we have Maury for the country northwest in Africa answering to the Maori name of the northwest as Maru. All of this is the same. Linguistically now, <laughs> this shifts the duality of Meru and Maru. It goes on. This is some deep stuff, more. Okay, yeah. And this is 590, page 591. Okay. It says, this name was, this name for the land like northwest of Africa center, always reckoning from the south with deposit names of the Maori land. Maori land now. Guess what this is going to take us to? Mar Maori Cup. And this was Morocco. <laughs> As the Maori or Moors went further north into Spain, Maori, Maori people were self named. I want you to stay with me now, Moors. Self named. As the immigrants who came from the Northwest, one name of which is Moru. Egyptian Meru. Egyptian Meru. All of these words are the same. All right? Vowels interchangeable. The Maori name is that of the later Moors. The name of the Moors. This is what the book reads now. Mm -hmm. The name of the Moors found on the Egyptian monuments is written as Maori or Maru. Islam Moors. Islam. All right, come on, brother. What was the page and the name of the book again? Uh, the name of the book is A Book of the Beginnings. 591, 592, Gerald Massey. Okay. Brother, could you raise this Gerald please real Massey. quick? Because time's of the essence. Okay, now I'm going to show you more and how it was used in ancient Egypt and the various meanings of the word more. Okay. I pray you got all those words, Moors, because it puts them to perspective That's right. what I'm about to write on the board right now. Now, more in the mental netter is written like this. One of the ways it's written is like this. And please forgive me, because this is really crude. <laughs> it 
look like a pet. I don't mean it like that, boy. That's why I said forgive me. Okay. It's supposed to be a bird. A bird. Please forgive me. Oh, okay. I know, that's crazy. That's cute. That looks like an owl's cute. That's what it is. Thank you. Wow, sister. That's exactly what this is. Yeah. That's an owl. Yeah. The owl facing forward. Yeah. Is the M sound. Okay. This is the open mouth glyph, which represents the R sound. Okay. Remember, we're talking about those ideograms. Okay, the code, the codes in the language. This is, this is more. This is more. Okay? Mm. Look, this. All the same. See what I'm writing here? More to M O R R M O R. I showed I showed you that in uh, Western Syriac dialect. M U U R M U R M E R. Vowels inter interchangeable. And I showed you M O R, the Western Syriac dialect, and the Eastern is M A R. All the same. And this is the point that I'm making because you're going to see this a lot in books, in translations mm -hmm. of the Metronetra. This is what you're going to see. Mer. This is this is more. More, yeah. That's what it is. You said so, open mouth. This is, I'm, I'm going to get there. Okay. So when you see one of the ancient names of the lands of Egypt, Ta means land. Wallace Budge says, land of the people of the Nile flood. Of the Moors. That's not true. Say again. Of the Moors. Of the Moors. That's what it is. This is land of the Moors. The Moorish people. And that's a word that's also used, uh, M-E-R-A-U, which gives you a plurality, if you will. OK? So, decoding the message, the ideogram, this is the owl facing forward. This is the universal symbol of wisdom. Wise old owl. So he can turn his head 360 degrees, which means he sees from all angles. He's aware, he's conscious, all right? He has the ability to see at night. He's a nocturnal creature which means his eyes come open at night. He sees through the foolishness. He sees through the folly. He sees clearly. So the plane of illusions, the wise old owl is aware. He's not caught up because he sees. All right? Our point, our point of consciousness was opposed on me alone. This is symbols. This are signs and symbols. All kind of symbols. Consciousness is a symbol of awareness, of awareness. So everything have awareness? Consciousness is proposed to the alone. These are symbols, sister. Oh, this symbol. We're decoding the symbols oh, okay. of these, these glyphs and these letters, if you will. The open mouth glyph, this represents the power of the spoken word. Oh, okay. I understand. Hekka, no more of the ancient Dogon people. Divine utterance. Speaking things into existence. That's that power. So that's symbolic. All right. The owls are symbolic of wisdom. wisdom. Yes. They're not actually saying. No, no, no. no. I see Listen, see this, this is wisdom. Right. Wisdom is the consciousness that man is all. That Allah and man are one. That naught is not powers but illusion. Heaven, earth, hell, not above nor around nor below, but in. Which in the light of all becomes naught. And Allah is all. That's wisdom, Moors. Yeah. All right, so do you know if this is actually one of the words for pyramid? Mm. Ain't that mighty, they say, what? <laughs> you see, because the word Moor is written, but then you have the determinative. Pyramid. That 
means pyramid. That right here. More. More is one of the words for pyramid. I see you, sister. That's one of our degrees. You see that charter? One of the ten wonders and mysteries of the world. That's right. One of them is the pyramids, Moors, and a prophet, he taught that the pyramid is symbolic of eternity. You are an eternal creature of Almighty God of love. Spirit is not subject to time. For things that are concerned with time, what? Begin and end. That's your spirit. The pyramid is the house of rebirth. Born from the womb of your mother with this body. But when you, when you receive enlightenment, the body itself becomes a womb for the second rebirth. Mm. You more hear what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> Generation. More. One of the words for more is pyramid, brothers and sisters. All right? Pyramid. Oh, uh, Islam, sister. I see your hand. I'm, I'm already busy. Now, the open mouth yes. is the power of the spoken word. That's right. My question is, I know for sure one of the, uh, a religion that I was affiliated with, mm -hmm. Masara Set, when the person dies, mm -hmm. they have what is called an open mouth ceremony. Mm -hmm. The mouth can actually be open and then the drums and everything. So what would that represent? Mm, I'm not sure, according to that order, what that represents, because according to what order you may belong to, it may have a different meaning. All right? But the mouth, this is also symbolic of the pathway of the spirit. Okay. Holy breath. That's another name for Allah. Holy breath. Holy breath is Holy Spirit. Because the etymology of breath is spiritus. All right? So, Islam, brother. Islam. You know, I'm too proper. So, praise Allah. Praise Allah. Like, you know, you say, when you blow breath into man, uh -huh. like, okay, then he sucks breath out of man. Uh -huh. What's that just about to? Well, is that just about to the death of That could, that could be the death. Form? The continuation of the spirit absent from the body. Because the body is nothing but an illusion. That's a, that's a storehouse. We talked about in a chapter, Pinnacle of Wisdom, how the bird enclosed in a cage, before you see it, yet he don't tear his flesh against its sides. Your spirit is encaged in your flesh. Your soul is encaged in your flesh. The soul resides in the brain. This is nothing but a God. The spirit is eternal. The spirit is perfect. So when you lay this body down, you still alive. The spirit is just moving. Remember, I gave you the etymology of spirit going to the Arabic, to the Hebrew, as being a traveler. All right? Yes, absolutely. So uh, as I explained before, there are many ways of writing more according to the metal netter. You have what is known as Uniconsonantal, biconsonantal, and triconsonantal. Because the metal net is written in consonants, no vowels. So you may have words, uniconsonantal, one consonant. Biconsonantal, two consonants. Three, three consonants. But some words are written with just one. So more is also written like this. What this is, this is a tool. Uh, it's called a hand hoe. A tool that you use to work the soil. A tool that you use to till the soil. I've seen them. This is more. <laughs> you see? But you gotta look into the code. Remember, the prophet gave us tools that we use where? In a workshop of the mind. In a workshop of, of the mind where things are made of thought. You use this tool to till the soil before you plant. You got to use this tool. Yeah. I think people use them on TV. We're using this in the soil of the mind. Mm -hmm. 
Remember Jesus taught about the treasures, the rich treasures that lie concealed beneath the rocky soil of carnal things. Mm. Rich treasures lie concealed. Where to get there, you got to use this tool. Mm. <laughs> you got you to gotta till the soil. All right? More is also written with the chisel. The prophet mentions the chisel. The chisel, lime, plummet, saw, all have their uses in the workshop of the mind. Okay? This, I'm going to just, because time is of the essence, I have to just run down uh, the many meanings of the word more. All right? More means pyramid. More means chief. That's right. <laughs> In uh, one book, actually, it says sheiks. That's right. Which is very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, more means head. More means director. More means superintendent. Uh -huh. Now that's in English, bailiff of a hundred. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, legally speaking. Black Law Dictionary. Okay? Um, more. Now the root. You'll always find this word more being used, but the root of the word, this is what it means. Love. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> Love, beloved. What's that uh, lady name? She always talking to the people. Van Zandt. <laughs> when she talked to people, she said, yeah. beloved. Peace, beloved. You all right, beloved? You see, subconsciously, she's addressing us with our proper name. That's right. That's what, that's what more means. What do beloved? Beloved. You are, beloved. you are loved. Whatever beloved you mean, are, you are loved. So I'm beloved by Allah? Absolutely. Praise Allah. Love. This is what we're trying to ascend to. Yes. Divine love. Exactly. We got to put love on the throne. The throne of our minds. Yeah. Learn to love instead of hate. That's the degree we got to aim That's for. Right. That's right. Not all this other stuff. Take practice. Learn to love instead of hate. Do that. That's right. Now, in closing for today, we, we can go further another time. Because they have more names, more meanings of the word more. Mm. More was found on what is known as the Palermo Stella. Palermo, Stella, because it's, they moved it to Sicily, I believe. You see, all these Europeans went to Egypt, and they stole a lot of stuff, yeah, took did. it back to Britain, Great. London, Sicily, all these places. All this stuff got Egyptian artifacts in it. That's deep. Yeah. And you read about Ernest A. Wallace Budge. Yeah, some terrible things, more. Some terrible, terrible things. But a lot knows best. Yeah. But on the Palermo, Stella... You find a word more. And what this word was demonstrated as, and I, as I explained before, Bay is our name. That's right. Bay is it is. This is our family name. That's right. But at one point in time, Bay was used as a title under the Ottoman Empire. That's right. Wow. So in ancient Egypt, you had Moors, but the word more was also used as a title. It was used as a title for the high priest. That's right. wow. See, when the chairman read that chapter, see, when things happen, when things line up like that, I have no doubt. I love God. High priest of the temple of Anu. That's what the more was. High priest of the temple of Anu. In Hebrew, Anu is on. In Greek, on is Heliopolis. Slime moors. Oh. All right. Okay. High priest of the temple of Anu. On. Heliopolis. All right. So the prophet Nobodrali, he's raising up. A nation of people 
But if you look deeper to the less and more, we be raised up as a nation of priests. Yeah. A nation of people who don't need no middle man. That's right. No one to intercede. That's right. Learn how to put our hands in Allah, Allah's own hand and know all is well. Is well. Right. Because wisdom, that's conscious, that's consciousness, that's an awareness that Allah and man don't want. That's something that you got to unfold towards realization. And the key to doing that is studying yourself. It's not more. Wow. All right, so more is if you go ahead, brother. If you had any questions from the lesson, um, please write it down, and we will revisit the lesson so we can answer any questions that you have uh, regarding our nationality, regarding the word more. And I, I thank you, Moors, for your attention. I thank you, Moors, for your patience. I am going to open up. The great meeting is on. Quran questions for Moorish Americans. Let's all recite the Moorish American prayer in unison. Allah, the Father of the universe, the Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day. Through the holy prophet, Amen. Quran questions for most children. Who made you? Allah. Who is Allah? Allah is the Father of the universe. Can we see him? No. Where is the nearest place we can meet him? In the heart. Who is Noble Draw He is Allah's prophet. What is a prophet? A prophet is the Lord of the manifest in the flesh. What is the duty of a prophet? To save nations from the wrath of Allah. Who is the founder of the more Science Temple of America? Noble Draw What year was the more Science Temple of America founded? 1914 AD. Where? New York, New Jersey. Where was Noble Draw born? In the state of North Carolina, 1886. What is his nationality? Moorish American. What is your nationality? Moorish American. Why are we Moorish Americans? We are sinners who are born in America. For what purpose was the Moorish Science Temple of America found? For the uplifting of all humanity. How did the prophet begin to uplift the Moorish Americans? By teaching them to be themselves. Y'all be ourselves, Moors. And I pray. With that particular lesson, we, we look deeper into the word more, to the meaning of the word more, we strive to live up to the attributes of what a more is. Peace! Peace! Allah, the Father of the universe. Allah, the Father of the universe. The Father of love. The Father of love. Truth. Truth. Peace. Peace. Freedom. Freedom. And justice. And justice. Allah is my protector. Allah is my protector. My God. My God. And my salvation. And my salvation. By night. By night. And by day. And by day. He was holy prophet. He was holy prophet. Drew Ali. Drew Ali. Amen. 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 Amen.